everyone and welcome to Poor Painting with Ron. I hope you've been well since the last video and I'm keen to share with you another painting today. Well, um, today I'm going to be doing another Dutch pour. I'm still playing around with a few different things just to get things the way I like them to be. Now, if you saw the, the last the last Dutch pour that I did, um, I used like, like garden colours and, and a little mini blower to blow the paint across the canvas. So I'll just show you that one just a sec. Here it is. It's it's all dry now, and I think it turned out pretty well. But I'm not sure if you can see in the video or not. There is heaps of lacing in the painting, and I was trying to figure out why in my Dutch pours I was just getting heaps and heaps of lacing happening. Now I did another one just the, the other day and I thought I'd filmed it but I didn't. I was pressing stop when I should have been pressing record and vice versa. But anyway the painting is dry. Um, it turned out okay but again I had this interesting lacing happening. Um, if I can find it. Here we go, that's this one. I found that the paint, especially over the black, just wouldn't blow out properly. It sort of started okay. And then I got so much lacing in it that I just got lots and lots of open windows with little bits of colour around the edges. You can probably see more up here that there's more lacing happening than than paint and all I used was paint and water which was a little unusual. I'd done one a bit earlier with Floetrol and I thought the Floetrol would have done it but there was no Floetrol in this one. So I'm guessing the only thing that it could be perhaps is um, an interaction of the base colours, the white and the black, with the colours that I've used at the top. And I used two brands. I used Montmartre colours for the white and the black and I used Amsterdam paints for the colours. And I, I think that maybe those two brands somehow reacted with each other and caused this unusual lacing. Now it is an interesting effect and something I'd like to perhaps play with a little, a little bit more. But today, just to test things out, I'm just going to be using Amsterdam paints. So I'm going to be doing a similar style painting um, with one extra colour this time, but I'm just using Amsterdam and no uh, Montmartre at all. I use the Montmartre because it's cheaper than Amsterdam, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Let's put this one away. Alright, so again I'm using my 40 by 50 thin edged canvas, and as usual I've taped off the back with painter's tape just to keep it tidy, and used some giant push pins that I got from my local office works store. Um, now I mixed up this time the Amsterdam um, black oxide or oxide black and titanium white. I started off with about a hundred grams of each color and then I mixed in enough water to make it the consistency that I wanted. You'll see the consistency in a little bit but I think I may have ended up adding almost as much water as paint. So hopefully it won't crack when it dries. And then for the colours, since you don't use much colour, I only use about um, 15 grams of colour and about the same amount of water to thin it out. So I'm using primary yellow. Hopefully it won't turn green when it meets the black, but we'll see. Um, then we've got naphthol red or naphthol deep red. And I've got, what's this one? Um, orange azo. So they should look really nice together. Just a bit worried about the yellow and the black, but yeah, I like yellow. We'll see, we'll see what happens. All right, so let's get started. So here we are, I've got my colours. As you can see, not many, not much colour. A little bit goes a long way with a Dutch pour. If you put too much on the canvas, you just have nowhere to blow it and it's just too thick. Um, lots of black and white. Um, not sure if you can see it, but this is the consistency. It's very thin, not quite water, but if it dribbles off the spoon, it doesn't leave a mound. And if I do a little twirly shape with the spoon, 
it doesn't leave a mound either. So really, really quite thin. And I've made all the colors exactly the same. All right, so I'll put them aside. We'll get started. Now the first step is to put the color on the canvas. Now I've, whenever I've used a single color, I've just tilted the canvas and that's worked. But using two colors, you can't really do that. So um, last time I used my palette knife to spread them out, but there, there was still too much on the canvas. It was a bit, a bit thick. So this time I'm going to try using a blow dryer to spread it out. We'll see what happens. You want some paint on the canvas, but you don't want so much that it dries too thick and you get too many mounds and all sorts of yucky stuff happening. But anyway, I'm going to put white at the top. Now I'm going not to go for corner to corner. I'll start a bit lower than the corner. And oh, where will I go? A bit above this corner down here. As you can see, very thin. Hopefully I didn't make it too thin this time. I will keep a little bit in case there is an emergency. I use the cool button on my blow dryer and a low setting. that I might just use the palette knife to just tidy up a little bit and make sure everything's covered feel free to fast forward this bit it's not the most exciting thing to watch I don't like leaving my sides uncovered. You probably see how thin it was while I was spreading it out. I think I've got everything covered. I can always touch it up a bit at the end when I'm done with the little bit of white that I have left over. There we go. Now for the black. I don't want to pour it into the white would be a bit unfortunate. my palette knife for the tricky bits. Yeah. Need 
to wipe the white off, of course. Otherwise, I get it into the black. It's easy to see what you've covered and haven't covered with black. White's, white's a bit harder. Not too worried about the bit of white you can see there because that will get blown over with the colour anyway. there. We're good. Okay. Now, colour layer. I'm going to start off with the darkest colour at the bottom and then end off with uh, the yellow at the top. We'll see what happens with this lacing if I get it happening as much as I did with the Montmartre. That's the, the look you're going for, of course. It will be good to remember. I think we had just enough red there. You don't want to overdo the colour. The dangerous one. There we go. All right. Mm, now the fun bit. The blowing out. Now, if you haven't used the blow, I. You use the blow dryer before. I make sure it has a cool button on it and different fan settings. So while I'm fanning, I hold the cool button down and I've got it on the lowest heat setting because you don't want to cook your paint. Okay, hold that button down, low fan. Yes, it was definitely the Montmartre paint that made it go all lacy looking. 
because I can already tell it's very different this time. Okay. Ah, well that looks interesting. A few little spitters I'll cover over with black in a little bit. I'll just blow it out a little bit. Thankfully not too much green happening. Okay, not too bad. I'll just get rid of that bit of colour. That's why it's a good idea to always have a bit of paint left over. Don't worry if there's like bumps on your painting, it all goes flat when it dries. That's probably a little too much there. Ooh, there's a lot of colour underneath that. Take that off. Sometimes you can let the painting dry and then touch it up. If this looks too scary for you. A bug. We don't want a bug in there.
few little touch-ups and then I'll give it a bit of a torch Give it a torch, we'll see what happens. as much as I've, I'm going to get happening. All right. Well, that's interesting. Certainly a lot different to that last painting I showed you where the, we got the extraordinary sort of lacing happening with the Montmartre colours. Okay, cool. Well, I'll tidy up the edges and then I'll bring you in for a closer look. Okay, so this is the, the final result. Hopefully you can see it. I would have liked a bit more negative space and not quite so much colour, so next time I'll put less paint on the canvas. I think it was definitely the Montmartre that created the lacing in the last one. What did you think? Uh, I think that I think it was interesting, but there are, there are certainly things I could do to my painting to to improve it. I think less color on the canvas. I had too much color. I did want uh, more negative space, so I do have to learn to put less paint on the canvas. Less is more. I think with this technique, I did learn though that the, the Montmartre and the Amsterdam together do create the extraordinary lacing, like I saw in my other paintings. So I'd like to perhaps experiment with that uh, a little bit more. Well, as usual, if you like what you saw today in today's video, please press the like button. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please take a moment to subscribe. Well, I, I hope you stay well in the next week and I look forward to seeing you again. And in the meantime, happy painting.